Um, as we uh, go through this process today, I, I am going to go ahead and introduce some of our speakers that you've heard about uh, or uh, that are in your manuals. I'm not going to go through the, their full details, but uh, we have uh, progressing down here on our panel today is Dr. Hyung Kim from Ascension Health. Uh, we have uh, Do uh, Horace Merkel uh, from Roche Diagnostics, uh, Clint McClellan from uh, Qualcomm, and Dr. Uh, Deepak Arigari from uh, Sharp Electronics. Uh, each one of these individuals is actually a board member of Continua, but they all represent uh, the specific uh, different aspects of the Continua spectrum in and of itself. So as, as you see here within Continua, we have uh, many and varied interests in as far as those that are participating within the organization. But let me jump in and uh, do a little bit of an explanation of Continua, and then we're going to uh, turn it over. I'm going to ask the panelists a couple of questions, and then we're going to turn it open and open it up to you to uh, allow you to ask some questions as well for us. Anyway, uh, we did hear a little bit about, uh, for those of you who were here in the early session, the uh, opening keynote, uh, there was a little, uh, Paul did talk a little bit about the Continuum Health Alliance, but I do want to give you a little bit more uh, in-depth background, if you will. Um, Continuum was founded as uh, really to take a look at creating an interoperable system of personal health care devices. And it's, this was an area where, uh, back in 2006 when we were founded, uh, really didn't have any type of a guidance. We didn't have any idea of how you connect all these devices together. Um, you know, everybody was uh, pursuing, when I say everybody, every company was pursuing separate ways to connect. And then the healthcare providers themselves were having to find ways to customize solutions to allow that data to come in. So uh, Continuous mission was to take a look at how do we take these devices, such as uh, glucometers, uh, things such as uh, weight scales, blood pressure cuffs, uh, thermometers, and a lot of different ometers uh, that you see out there in the market today, and find a way to standardize that process to be able to collect them in a, uh, with a single model so that uh, you only had to have one point of connection to, uh, to acquire the data in that sense. So, you know, there was a need. We've heard a, a very distinct opportunity uh, for why we want to do this in the remote patient monitoring field. Uh, the other speakers, uh, the other panelists have uh, gone in quite detail about why we want to do this. But, you know, just a few quick facts here about this. In England, 15.4 million people, including 6% were those over the age of 60, suffer from a long-term condition. In addition to that, almost half of all Americans who are over 65 have, this, uh, have some uh, chronic condition as well. So there is a, a huge need in our system today for helping and assisting individuals uh, who have these diseases who, which they're not going to recover from to be able to manage them better, be able to help them inform them in uh, healthy lifestyle choices in a sense. So what we see here, and we've heard here again this whole uh, convergence, we've seen triangles, we've seen other things today, talking about the aspect of uh, the, what we call uh, the healthy part of life. And what we've, we've talked about here today is that uh, we think that we're all on the green line. In reality, we're all on the orange line. Uh, and that is that as we go through life, we, without doing anything of, of con, you know, consistently measuring where we are today, we slowly progress and sometimes progress more rapidly than we think. So what we're trying to do today is, uh, with these types of instrumentation, this type of activity of uh, being able to do this within the home on a more consistent basis is, is raise and elevate people, kind of move you back up to that green line of performance and that green line of health, if you will. Uh, the other part of this is that a significant portion of our uh, diseases that are disease states out there are modifiable by interventions. If we know how to treat them, we certainly can take care of ourselves better in this case. Uh, you know, here again, uh, this is just a little bit more about why we're doing this and what we're about with the standards perspective. Uh, it is really truly about picking standards. Uh, now, Continua in and of itself is not a standards body. We don't go out and set standards. What we do, though, as an organization is select the best standards that are out there. Um, so what we've done is based our operations per, uh, predominantly on the IEEE specifications. Uh, here again, since we're an international alliance, we need to make sure that we can uh, cross borders and that we don't have to continue to create custom solutions for each country that we enter into. IEEE is a, a nice spec, uh, specification, the ISO standards in this case, because they are truly international in, uh, in being able to set those uh, activities. Our structure is to use the working group models. Uh, it's volunteers. It's an all-volunteer army. With that said, we've got about 2,000 volunteers from our member companies within the Continuum Alliance today who uh, work in specific work groups. So there's technical working groups. There's use case working groups. There's test and cert work groups. Uh, up and beyond that, uh, we'll take a look at the breakdown of our technical working groups. We even get into things such as end-to-end -end architecture, low-power radio discussions as well. And then, you know, it's all about our ecosystem development as well. So, you know, Continua Health Alliance in and of itself is here to create a certification program. It's probably our strongest strength is the certification program and what we're trying to create and using the basis for the standards. But with that said, we also provide developer resources within the ecosystem itself. Uh, and, and then there's also the market intelligence. So we capture things like we've had Harry Wang come and present to us specific information about some of the activities that we, uh, and for our membership on where this particular market is going. 
But then there's obviously the collaboration that comes along with that, as well as uh, we're able to pool resources together. So uh, one of the things that we have is the continuing enabling source code library for those organizations who are participating to help uh, them rapidly prototype devices uh, that they can take and download this code and be able to implement that uh, very rapidly. So these are some of the things that, uh, where we talk about the ecosystem. One of the things that was unique this year, though, in, in our ecosystem development was that we discovered that there is no other organization like Continua representing this type of healthcare market space. Now, in conjunction with the American Tele uh, Telemedicine Association, we've actually been working with Congress to make sure that we do get funding <coughs> and mentioned specifically in the healthcare legislation that's going on. We've done very much so likewise activities in both Japan and also the European nations as well, and specifically are starting a program this year with the European Commission on a grant-funded opportunity there. So just to, uh, as a quick uh, aside, I'm going to do the three domains, and then we're going to jump into the panelists themselves. Uh, Continua really works within three domains of healthcare. We take a look at this aspect and define it specifically with uh, the aging independently category. So this is the, uh, the elder care. How do we keep our elders safe and well at home? Uh, how do we measure their performance, make sure that they're safe, uh, that, you know, things such as bed pressure sensitivity, are they getting up out of bed, fall sensors, uh, you know, safety sensors such as gas, water, carbon monoxide detection, um, you know, and medication adherence, are they taking their pills on time and appropriately. We also do the health and wellness aspect of this. So those that are, like, for example, junior athletes who want to measure their performance or those who are professional athletes need to measure their performance, in addition to the wellness aspect of this as well. So those that are working in a hypertension program for an employer, for example. Um, and then there's also the disease management category, which is probably the, the widest known and, and easiest to identify with, with chronic diseases such as diabetes, obesity, uh, hypertension, COPD, and asthma, uh, as some examples of this particular area. But these are the opportunities that Continua is working in uh, predominantly. So if you think about it, it's really personalized connected health. How do we get to that personal connected health and bring the point of care to the individual, bring it outside the four walls of typical institutions that we see today, the healthcare institutions, and also the physician offices as well. Now with that said, our, our ultimate goal is to provide that data back into the, as a resource to organizations like those uh, healthcare providers. In addition to that, it's also provided to extended caregivers. So you may have individuals who are uh, working in disease management solutions, or ultimately the data may go back to your personal health record. Um, and for those of you who were here earlier, you saw uh, that where the data was flowing across the different spectrums, uh, that demonstration is actually happening, and we actually can demonstrate that today down in the booth. So if you, if you want further information about the specifics of Continua, we are, uh, there is a, a Continua pavilion downstairs at 2817, and we can demonstrate that information flowing from, uh, for example, personally collected devices into uh, a Google PHR today. So with that said, though, I'm going to turn it over to the panelists. I'm, I'm going to ask them a couple of questions. Uh, but I, I do want to give them an opportunity just to give them themselves a brief introduction so that they have a chance to um, you know, say a little bit about who they are and what, who they represent. So we'll start here with Dr. Kim. Uh, I'm Dr. John Kim from the Ascension Health where I lead uh, research and development. Uh, thank you. I'm Dr. Young Kim. Um, I need a nurse or someone else being a physician to make sure I'm on track. Uh, I lead the R&D group at Ascension Health, which is the, the largest nonprofit in Catholic health system in the U.S. with 70-some hospitals and hundreds of clinics in 20 states in the District of Columbia. I'm a retired internist. I went from seeing patients to doing meetings now. Is this better? Okay. My name is Horst Merkel. I'm uh, Director in Information Management for Diabetes Care within Roche Diagnostics. Um, and with that, I'm looking back to about 15 years of uh, experience with informatics in the healthcare space. And um, Roche Diagnostics is a leader in um, diabetes management, diabetes monitoring. And with that, we have a really vast interest. And we have always dedicated ourselves to interoperability because we think that getting the information in the hands, in the right hands, as, as fast as quickly as quickly as possible and uh, as complete as possible is uh, just helping us as a company, but also helping the disease, manage disease. Qualcomm is not a health and life sciences company. We're a wireless systems company. So what we're doing is looking at how we apply wireless technology and system technology to, to the medical world. And there were many questions earlier about what happens, uh, it has to be simple. It absolutely has to be simple. And if you look at something as remarkable as the cell phone in your pocket, uh, that phone knows when you walk out of here to always look for the best signal. It's jumping to 3G. If it can't find 3G, it'll go back and forth. You never have to worry about it. As you're driving at 90 miles an hour, the underlying system hands off and knows where you are and what you do. And those are the same sorts of systems we have to apply here. Uh, and, and does anyone know the Kindle? 
uh, a Kindle, an electronic ebook. The remarkable 